be sure to throw us some love over at Patreon at patreon.com slash the cinema snob. It is that time of year when I sit down for my giant year in film endeavor, which means you can see installments of the cinema snobs 1984 in film long before the whole thing is released. All that and more over at patreon.com slash the cinema snob. Okay, all right, people, all right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, it, it goes for all the uh, uh, partiers on the street outside, too. Making sure it's, uh, making sure I got the green square right there. Still green, and the chat's good, too. I'm getting a lot of hearts in the chat right there. A lot of hearts, a lot of hearts. Angry face. <laughs> Someone's really mad that I'm showing uh, a green right there. We get, looks like we got a pretty good connection this time. We, uh, we, we didn't have a, <laughs> we had some glitching and some freezing when we did this uh, a, a couple of days ago, it probably made the uh, chat GPT version of the Cinema Snobs Porky's review make uh, less sense than than without. Actually, you know what? Maybe the glitching made it make, make more sense. Mm -mm. <laughs> it didn't matter that it got messed up with the glitches because the chat GPT Porky's didn't call the audience snobsters in it. So this is not a surprise stream, necessarily. It is the second stream of the week. I mentioned in uh, the one a couple of days ago, I did one on Monday because the Cinema Snobs episode of Porky's is still hung up in, in, in copyright. And I'm thinking, oh, and, and given the fact that I'm doing this stream today, th that it is still in copyright limbo. I, I'm thinking it's going to be one where um, it isn't necessarily... It isn't necessarily that the uh, the person who claimed it will let it go, like accept the appeal. I think it might be one where it just simply has to time out, and I think it's going to time out in about four days. So probably Saturday you'll finally be able to see the uh, uh, Porky's episode of the Cinema Snob. But you can currently see it. You can currently see it on Patreon right now. patreoncom slash snob. I'm doing a lot of extra stuff over there now too to really uh, put a lot more uh, focus on there than I uh, have been able to recently due to the whole like COVID, having COVID thing and, anything, and everything. But I'm adding some extra stuff to it. Of course, you can see uh, the Porky's episode on there right now. And it will be doing a lot more Toxbox Cinema Snob polls. But I've actually got another poll going on there right now. And this particular poll ends like tomorrow evening where... Due to my schedule and also uh, I, I'm writing my second book, I only have a time to, I really only have time to see about one new movie a week and I go see them on Thursday nights now. So I left it up to a poll on there. I listed all the new movies that our the movie theater is getting and so, so okay, like Abigail is on there, the Guy Ritchie movie is on there, uh, Sasquatch Sunset, I think there's a couple of faith-based movies on there too, a couple of other things that I hadn't really heard of. But I left it up to the audience over on Patreon. What do you want me to go see for the new movies out there? And it won't just be a short either. I mean, not that the review will be long necessarily. It'll be one of those probably like three to four minute ones that, that I kind of used to do. But when I do miss something in the theater and I need to catch up to it later, like, uh, you know, if I miss a couple of new things that are out this weekend and I have to catch them uh, on streaming later on, those I'll do those I'll do some shorts on. Uh, so uh, anyway, is that all the uh, is that all the, uh, the the homework I had to get to? Oh, there's one more thing too over on Patreon. Uh, a couple more things. One, the first part of 1984 in film is over there. Very important month. The month of January 1984. We cover the classics like uh, uh, Hot Dog the Movie as well as Angel. What else was in there? There was a revenge film called Violated. There was one that was kind of like the model version of The Lonely Lady called Cover Girl. This one with uh, Jeff Conway. That couple of other movies are covered in January of 1984 in film. So we've already started that. You'll get to see those installments over on Patreon. And I noticed they added a, uh, a store section on there as well where you can put... Uh, 
a lot of digital files and digital downloads. So I went ahead and uh, in the store section, uh, I went ahead and made an an uncut version of the Porky's episode. So regular Porky's episode on, is on there, and exclusive uncut version of the Porky's episode is on there too. So uh, anyway, on to uh, on to things that are. Way more important than ski-based sex comedies from the 1980s and uh, uh, the Porky's films, of course. <laughs> My son's milestone, as I put in the uh, subject heading for this particular live stream. Don't even want to call this a podcast anymore, really. Uh, Brad tries podcasting. Yeah, sure, why not? Oh, I see it's the 50th episode, by the way. Episode. <laughs> It's the fiftieth time I've uh, jumped on here live for a bit of a hangout session. That that that's really what it is. I, I I do have fun with these. You guys give some good questions too. I already see there's some in there on the super chat. So he might be as what what's the milestone uh, of uh, my son Jack? One person in the chat before uh, we before we went live guessed uh, he uh, may have gotten a stone and put his name on it or something no but i will hmm. everyone needs a nice uh, collectible stone you hang around your neck and shit no is you might be asking is he walking is he talking well no and uh no he, he's not doing all of those things way too early because that would mean he's the mutant baby from the it's alive remake <laughs> well he is kind of so he's in the uh uh, babbling stage right now. So he, he's figuring out his words. Sometimes very, very late at night. He is figuring out his words. A lot of like, <laughs> like it's like if it was deeper and gruffer, <laughs> like it would almost be like kind of a, a baby's at first attempt at an Arnold impression. <laughs> But it is a uh, 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 figuring out his words. Still loves his hands. Still loves gnawing on his hands. Loves gnawing on uh, the uh, uh, little like poles on his uh, little play area. We uh, we've been giving him some, you know, paste food, all that, the rice cereal. And sometimes he's interested in that. Sometimes he is just interested in sitting there and gnawing on the table. Uh, uh. Like me in my drunk days when we would go to Denny's, shit-faced. Why wait for the burger to show up? You're very hungry, you need something on your stomach. Chow down on the table for a little bit. He is doing the, like, he's not saying da-da, as in, like, knowing that that's me. But he is, since da is, like, you know, an easy thing for babies to do, to do like, what he is doing, like, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. He is doing that. Could just be, maybe he just really likes that song. Da, da, da. Remember the old commercial? Jack is already loving old 90s commercials. No, no. Here's, um, here's the big milestone that Jack has had. Don't know how important it is to him, really. But, um, very important to Laura and myself. The other night, uh, it was it was uh, Monday night, although Monday night to uh, Tuesday morning, going through the overnights and everything. He it was the first time he's done this. Uh, for, first first time he's done this. It was baby's first time sleeping completely through the night. Again, very important to Laura and myself. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for it either, so we split up our uh, days, really, when it comes to, like, feeding Jack in the overnights. You know, half the week Laura does it, half the week I do it. So the night that he did sleep through the night, it was uh, uh, the first of my nights uh, during the week to uh, take care of Jack, and I was still, like anticipating he was about to wake up so I would still wake up a couple of times during the night for the times I got to get up and use the restroom like so I would wake up a couple times at night and just sort of like yeah fall back asleep but the, but kind of like I'd shut my eyes and be like mm, 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 like that anticipating that he might wake up and like need his night feeding and everything but um but no, I, I would even hear him a couple of times, like, j again, just make, like, a sound, just sort of, like, 
ah, ah, and then he'd just like go back to sleep. But I would still be there. We're like, he's is he is he gonna do it? Is he gonna make it through the night? And then when I woke up, because I I wake up very very early. So when I woke up, when I woke up in the five uh, twenty, I think I woke up at about five twenty. And I woke up and I was like, there, there's not like a clock near me or anything. But I was like, I feel like it's in the five o'clock hour right now. Did he sleep through the whole night? That's awesome. I looked up and I was like, yeah, it says 520. And so like he was he was starting to get up and I got him up. I was preparing that his like <laughs> it would be like that his diaper would be just like cartoonishly full. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen that meme picture before maybe maybe not there's a lot of memes uh, that i hadn't seen till i had a son so i don't know if you've seen that meme where it's like a baby like picture this is like the size of the baby like right here but then the diaper is about like that and it said something like uh, uh parents uh, parents first night first overnight with the baby or something like that so i was sort of like expecting expecting that really because he was sleeping through the night i didn't want to wake him up and uh no no uh since he went through the night and everything had his uh baby paste before bed and his bottle too uh no there were there was no overflowage uh later on that afternoon he had like a feces blowout that kind of uh, uh seeped through the side a little bit uh and it get better uh, him than me because I did shoot a uh, a, a Brad tries for I, I did shoot a Patreon Brad tries uh, that particular day so that could have been another thing we bonded over baby shitting through his onesie dad shitting through his pants because it's not Christmas I'm not wearing a onesie I wear my Christmas onesies during the holidays and I <laughs> and I shit through those to the you know mm -mm. The butter rum moves through me very, very fast. So <laughs> I get up. I, typically, I get up before Laura does. So I get up. Laura gets up, and Laura's getting ready for work. And I say to her, I go, uh, he slept through the entire night last night. And she was 10% happy. The rest of the percent <laughs> was her going... God damn it, why did it have to be your night? <laughs> why couldn't it have been, why couldn't it have been <laughs> because last weekend when it was like <laughs> Laura feeding him at night, he, he was awake a little bit more than usual. <laughs> But dad got him, and, uh, and he's like, hey, you know what? I'm going to catch up on about eight hours of sleep. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let you two sleep through the night. So she's sitting there like, why you? Why you? Why couldn't it have been me? Why couldn't it have been my night? And then last night, <laughs> before he went to sleep, I was like, we need to repeat every single thing we did the night before. <laughs> so it's like, okay, uh, we'll feed him his paste at this time. We'll feed him his, uh, his, his bottle here. We got to just repeat things exactly. Let's see if he <laughs> makes it through the whole night again. <laughs> And uh, he only woke up once. Last night, he only woke up once. Uh, again, I was still, like, laying there, kind of, like, waiting for it to happen. Like, you know, I'd wake up, go back to sleep, and but still, like, reluctant, like, kind of, like, mm, like, I'm going to sleep on guard. <laughs> like, I'm watching Jack in a foxhole or something like that. I'm keeping, like, one eye open. I'm on my guard that the baby's going to uh, blow any minute. But no, he only woke up once, and he woke up at about 2.20 in the morning or something like that. Again, <laughs> the next morning, Laura's, I, I say to her, yeah, he only woke up like once. He only woke up like once last night. She's like, damn it. Why? She's like, I really hope he does this for me. She goes, it's going to be my first night with him over the weekend, and it's going to be back to like waking up a bunch of times during the night and uh, making his cooing, making his sounds and everything. Because <laughs> I, I sleep through when it is my night to like sleep through and everything. I'm, I'm a pretty heavy sleeper, honestly. So <clears throat> sometimes it doesn't. When I first lay down to fall asleep, sometimes it can kind of take me a while to, like, shut my brain down and everything. But, you know, when I wake up at night to, like, either feed Jack or go to the restroom or something like that, I, I get up, 
lay back down and then it, it doesn't take me very long to go back to sleep so uh uh when it's when laura's the one getting up usually i, I kind of sleep through all of that and so laura says um Laura goes, well, she's look, trying to look at the bright side of things. She's going, <laughs> she's going, uh, uh, well, you know, over the weekend, maybe if he, maybe if he gets up, maybe if he gets up when, uh, <laughs> when it's, when it's my turn to watch him, may it get, maybe it, maybe it just means he loves his mother more. He misses his mother. He wants me to wake up and like feed him and take care of him. It's, it's, probably true jack he see so far he doesn't really seem to show much interest in the movies that i have on that i'm watching for the cinema snob he could have cared less about something short of paradise uh that i was watching uh yesterday and then um today i watched uh, uh porky's 2 the next day and Again, he he must have forgotten all of the events when we watched the first Porky's last week because he, he it seemed like he really wasn't following the uh, few plot lines that were going on in uh, Porky's Two the next day. I, I think he might have forgotten uh, that uh, Pee Wee did in fact hook up with Wendy in the bus at the end of Porky's. <laughs> Spoiler, by the way. <laughs> So I uh, would yeah so uh, a couple weeks uh, over the weekend you'll be getting uh uh the early review of something short of paradise and the early review of Porky's 2 the next day it's going to be over on Patreon. So I uh, I got those two knocked out this week. Oh yeah yeah. Oh yeah, yeah let's talk a little bit right now about something short of paradise. I'll, I'll show the poster again. If you missed the stream the other day or if it was one of the moments where the computer was glitching the hell out the connection was going in and out whatever usually it's my attention usually it's my attention and stream of thought that glitches i'd rather that than uh the connection so the last patreon poll we did for the cinema snob the winner was something short of paradise it had been on it's actually a really good question uh it's been over a year that that's been like the stock fifth choice on there. If it's been two years, I'm not sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's been two years that it's been the stock fifth choice. But it won. It won. I had to actually like download the exact numbers for it because percentage wise, Rosemary's Baby was 34%. Something Short of Paradise was 34%. So I had to download the numbers and it's Something Short of Paradise won by. <laughs> One by one. <laughs> it won by a single vote. Which I actually, I think that also happened with Windy City. Windy City, it was also like incredibly close. And when it won, it was no more but than by like a few, I think, or something like that. So, okay, so I'm glad that something short of Paradise finally won. And, and then when I sat down to watch it, it actually took me a while to find it so thanks to something short of paradise i now know that mgm has a streaming service i didn't know that mgm plus was a thing <laughs> i might have to check more of it out but something short of paradise was on mgm plus so that's how i watched it as for the movie <laughs> without well, uh, i'm not gonna get too much into it before i uh put the review for it up but You'll want to see the review for this. So, okay. For the stuff that, like, in the melodrama category that I've done, the melodrama, romantic drama, whatever, like, stock fifth choice movies on the cinema snob, there's kind of different categories that they end up in. There's the ones that are, like, you know, not terrible, but just, like, so mediocre you could tell like why they were forgotten and how they ended up on a poll like the ones that i do that category of the ones that are like these movies that are just you know kind of eh, eh, and just lost to time that i would put independence day 83 even though it, that is a very important movie to my life to my life to be perfectly honest i talk about that a little bit in 1983 in film uh but, but like movie itself the 
I still get something can be like very forgettable and totally middle of the road, but I can still like milk it for material, man. I still use that scene from Independence Day '83 when Diane Weist blows herself up in the house, blows her and Cliff D. Young up in the house. Uh, Windy City, I would put in that category. Again, still got a lot of material out of it. Still reference Saul to this day. Um, Dreamer, I would put in that category. The uh, bowling rom-com with uh, uh, Tim Matheson. And then there's one... The, then there's, like, the category of surprisingly good, which I think there's only one. And that was... Uh, I did like Soup for One. I actually legitimately really liked that. Like, it was... Yeah, it was, you know... It, it was it was a knock it was a knockoff of like a like a Woody Allen movie, but I did enjoy it. Like it was Saul Rubinek and Garrett Graham like really made that movie work. They were funny in it, and it was kind of clever what it did with the ending too. So that one I legitimately kind of liked. And then there's like the category of you have to see it to believe it to like find out everything that's wrong with this movie. <laughs> there I put until September. The, the Karen Allen romance movie, uh, which, again, bizarre in a way that you can't describe. You just have to watch it. Uh, this wasn't a poll choice, but I would put, like, moment by moment in that category. <laughs> That's the category I put something short of paradise in. It doesn't work. <laughs> I won't say it's, like... I won't say it ever gets as, like, jaw-dropping as uh, until September or... Um, uh, it moment by moment, it really doesn't work out. <laughs> I won't say anything like specific about it, but I did get a lot of material out of the movie. I I, I really did. Um, so look forward to seeing that. That should be up Monday, uh, provided that it doesn't get hit by copyright. Provided it doesn't get hit by copyright. It'll be up. It'll be up on Monday. If it's not up by Monday, then um, then I guess uh, I don't know. Chat GPT version of something short of paradise. Chat, chat that movie's so forgotten. Chat GPT doesn't know what that is. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of curious now what it would say. Like it was just right back. Stop making up movies. Have me review Porky's again. So uh, anyway, but regardless if it gets flagged for copyright or not, it'll be up on uh, Patreon. So show us some love over there on Patreon at patreon.com slash the cinema snob and vote on the poll going on right now for uh, what movie am I going to go? What new movie am I going to go see tomorrow night? All right. Should we get to the super chat questions? Didn't really plan a t hell of a lot for this one. <laughs> Less so than usual. <laughs> So let's go. Let's go ahead and uh, get to your super chats. Uh, let me load this up. And I'm just, if you miss the stream on Monday, you'll find out that I really, really, really do need new glasses. Okay. Here we go. All right, your super chat questions. Thank you so much, by the way. Um, There we go. Okay. Eclectic Ennui. Are you still doing uh, the midnight screenings uh, requests? Oh, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll turn those back on. Once here, Here's what I got to do for that. I got to... Uh, uh I gotta set aside like uh, a, a couple of weeks when I have a couple of weeks to burn and just uh, have us just like plow through those remaining requests. And uh, once that happens, I'll like turn that choice back on um but uh no uh, until now on uh until now uh, your best bet on patreon is uh again the levels that have the polls the levels that have the uh early access stuff also more things i'm going to be adding to the store uh the store over there has the uncut version of the porkies review might start doing some exclusive stuff with that too it would actually be really cool to, to go back to uh doing the type of stuff that I would have been able to do like in the blip days <laughs> but not so much on YouTube it would actually be cool to finally like fit in some of that and maybe put them put them over in the store on uh on Patreon 
Uh, Eclectic NUA again says, I think I know the answer to this, but Caligula the Ultimate Cut is coming to theaters in August. Will you see it and review it? If it comes around here, yeah. <laughs> I mean, hell, like, uh, uh, regardless of if, if it's in theaters around here, which I imagine it would be playing in the city. Uh, yeah, I, I might go back to, I might actually do like an old school midnight screenings review, like for that, for Caligula, the ultimate cut. Um, that'd be cool. Or I'd make it a snob episode or something. Um, but I'll, I'll check that release date. I know that it is getting like a digital release to i hope it's good it should go to the if it's coming to theaters in august i imagine it would go to some theaters around here and i'm there man i'm curious what they do i don't know if this part because there's so much like footage that they didn't use for that movie and you can see some shots of it whether it's in the making of or whether it's in uh, even uh, the novelization and the mag the penthouse magazine from the time have a couple of shots that like aren't in the movie and the and the the three disc dvd of it has like some scenes but there's no sound in them or anything like that so i've also heard that this ultimate cut like it is a total re-edit even that i don't know if this part of it is true but i did hear something about it doesn't have any of the same shots from the other one that has me very curious if it is a lot of alternate takes that are being used because you know even in the other one there's very important scenes where i'm like this scene should probably still be in no matter what cut you're working with so I'm curious, like if it's, if they're using a lot of like alternate takes and alternate shots, that would, that'd be awesome. I it it's my it's my most anticipated movie of the year. Danny McGraw. Hey Brad, what are some of your favorite sports movies? Good question. Uh, I love Major League. Major League is uh, it, it, Jack's got a, a a onesie for that. Actually, actually, it's for it's for Major League Two. <laughs> Dave got that for him. Major League Two is not very good, but uh, Major yeah, Major League. It's one of those movies. I saw that in the theater. I saw that in the theater when it came out, and it's one of the, like it's a total comfort movie. If it's on TV, like hell yeah, I'm watching it, man. It's so damn quotable. The characters are all like so unique and well done, and each one of them really stands out and has their own personality, and are so memorable with their lines and everything. It's just the the comedy writing on it and the character writing on it is so good in that film great audience movie too like you like you know when wild thing starts playing and charlie sheen walks out in those glasses that like yeah man you're supposed to stand and applaud dude uh other sports movies i mean rollerball kicks ass uh rollerball uh feel the dreams i would put up there um uh, the sandlot um oh man oh slapshot slapshot's a classic dude slapshot about just like uh hey you know uh the team it's uh, the team's probably going to shut down so why not go all out and start kicking people's ass on the hockey rink throw some maxi nightingale and some fleetwood mac on the soundtrack great film oh the original longest yard uh the burt reynolds one um what do you what do you think in the chat i'm looking at the chat right now hey see there we got some slap shot fans in there um <laughs> Yeah, throw out some titles there in the chat, and I'll try to, like, glance over and see some of that. Um, Matt Florent, hey, Brad, what's your favorite character on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Uh, probably Mac, honestly. Uh, Mac has such a great arc over the course of the series, and Rob McElhenney is so goddamn talent talented in just his facial expressions alone. Like, what he can do with his eyebrows just standing there, like, stoically, like, kind of looking and trying to act, like, tough and everything, and has his whole, like, kind of fake tough guy routine with his... And is so goddamn confident, too. It's brilliant. Like, when he does his, like, sweet karate moves and shit... <laughs> Anything involving Mac, the duster, and karate moves, instantly comic gold. So yeah, actually, uh, uh, 
Yeah, I yeah, I, I would say Mac is actually my favorite character on there. Deleted scene says, "Greetings, Brad. Sorry I can't stay as my own live stream starts uh, starts shortly. Glad to see you back on your feet. My best to you, Laura and little Jack. Thank you, thank you very much. That really means a lot. Good luck to you over on your stream too. Hope it goes very well. Hope you don't have any connection issues either, like like I had last week. No, I got back on my feet pretty well. I mean, the biggest." <laughs> Not the biggest bummer of it, but uh, the biggest bummer of it was the fact that I was very sick. <laughs> I, I, I seem to bounce back okay. Like, uh, now the, the biggest annoyance is just simply, like, you know, catching up to where I like the videos to be in advance. Which, by this weekend, it'll be back to normal on that. Because I got... Uh, Something Short of Paradise watched yesterday. I got Porky's 2 watched today. I'll be editing those over the weekend. And uh, they'll be going on Patreon over the weekend. So then I'll kind of all be uh, I'll be caught up. Uh, Senor, Senor Stick says, No more good Pure Flix movies? Snob Jr. gets a suit. Yeah, man. <laughs> I don't know. Are there some? I mean, uh, it seems like the last couple of Pure Flix movies I saw, I kind of liked. Uh, I was okay with Beckman. Like, I, I it, it was uh, David A. R. White was really cool in it, but uh, it needed some tighter editing on a lot of shots. Uh, some sequences kind of didn't work. Overall, I thought it was okay. Like, it, 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 it was a solid rental. And I like revenge movies like that, and so does he. It's why he wanted to do it, and so, yeah, both he and I like really, really dig revenge movies. Um, I can't. Before then, I can't remember what the last Pure Flix movie was that I saw. It seems like anymore. Whenever I mean, not that there's still a lot of, not that there's not a lot of Pure Flix movies still, but it seems like a lot of the ones that I've reviewed anymore are more from like. Um, Angel Studios, uh, the ones that did uh, the what was, the shift was that what it was called? Yeah, the shift, the sci the sci fi book of Job movie that that wasn't that bad, honestly. Uh, that uh, a firm films has done some, not some, they've done a lot. Uh, did they do, did a firm films do Ordinary Angels? Um, I did, I've seen some from those. And, oh, the Fathom events. The Kevin Sorbo Fathom events ones. I don't. I Sorbo Studios, I guess maybe does those. I'm not sure. I I think so. I think it is like his production company that's listed in front of those. Mm -mm. Um, yeah. I wish I could. Re yeah, man. I wish I could remember what some of the last Pure Flix movies were that I saw. Um, I know they're making um, God's Not Dead Five. Uh, Senor Sticks, what if Jack learned to talk watching Jay Sherman? <laughs> well, he's he, he's gonna need to wait to get out of the diaper stage before he has the right to tell anything else. It stinks. It stinks. It stinks. Oh, you're one to talk, son. You're the one with the feces with the uh, diaper full of feces that's uh, uh, kind of leaking on the onesie. Dad waits until Dad waits until Christmas to uh, shit in his onesies. I'll watch the critic with my son. Hell yeah, that'll absolutely be one of the cartoons I watch with my son. Jacob Matthew Crawford, happy happy fiftieth stream. Thank you, thank you very much. It's an anniversary episode. <laughs> These live streams. You know what? Uh, as much as I joke, you know. Yeah, I I joke like about like oh you know you get a good I don't really write down a lot of stuff when I do this I mean so I I take like little notes and you know sometimes it's been like oh I'm gonna review this movie sometimes it's uh, I'm gonna eat this food other times it's you know talking you know Jack stuff which is that you know, my my favorite thing to do on it um. Truth be told, though, like part of why I do do this uh, every week is uh, um, it will be kind of nice to like years go by to like look back on. And here is like decades old video of 
me talking about, um, you know, m- the first time my son slept through the night. Or, you know, here's me talking about my son's name. Here's me talking about the day he was born, you know, right around when it was happening. And not during when it was happening. <laughs> I get, keep pushing, honey. I'm going to go stream for a little bit. <laughs> as has the connection in this hospital. Better be good. Um, no. So, uh, as much as I joke that 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 actually is kind of why I like doing stuff like this every week. Um, but oh, it, anyway, on with the rest of your comment. Um, I had a feeling Laura would say, "Of course, he slept on Dad's night." <laughs> Can you list any non-filmmaking folk who you find inspiring? Authors. I guess maybe an easy answer, uh, but uh, um, I grew up reading, you know, I grew up reading a shitload of Stephen King, man. So uh, he's he he's one like a non film. Well, he did direct. Uh, he he did direct uh, Maximum Overdrive. So there is that. <laughs> um, non filmmakers who uh, who have inspired me. Um, Oh, well, I mean, you know, musicians. Like, oh, I'll sit there, like, uh, when I'm in, like, note stages on scripts and listen to some of my favorite um, music to the, the, that maybe will, like, set the mood in my head or give me some ideas, things like that. So, yeah, uh, like, Bee Gees are definitely influential in that regard. Uh, you know, the Rolling Stones, uh Thomas Dolby, people like that. Um, so yeah. Oh, um, and Jesus. <laughs> I did write Jesus, bro. So Jesus has to take some credit for being a little influential on Jesus, bro. Uh, Dave Valensky, do you have an uncut version of Chatterbox? You don't want to see that. Um, no, 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 uh, 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 though that, so that's an episode that, um, there's a lot of episodes that I wish I didn't do back when I did them because, uh, Chatterbox, the quality of the Chatterbox, there's the quality of the Chatterbox review is not very good. Uh, and not that I've really ever had the best quality in the world, but, um, the quality of Chatterbox, because I think it didn't save correctly or something like that. So when I was pulling a lot of stuff off of Blip, when Blip shut down, I think I had to get it from like a third party or something like that. And it's one where, and it's the same with the Caligula episode as well. Um, the audio and the size of the picture and everything, like it's Blur City, man. And like more more so than a usual episode back then. And episodes back then were pretty like blurry and low quality and the sound wasn't very good. Uh, so I wouldn't really be able to, to like edit an uncut version of the chatterbox review. Um, one, I kind of barely remember the movie because I reviewed it a long time ago. Uh, like I remember when she's singing and dancing and, uh, or sorry, when her vagina is singing and she's dancing but, uh, and I remember really not liking the movie. I remember Pussy Talk being way better, honestly. Because Chatterbox is a remake of this movie, of this, uh, I think, French film. This, like, g- really kind of cool avant-garde French film called Pussy Talk that was, like, super stylish. And uh, um, actually did have some sexy moments in it, too. I went in, because I saw Chatterbox before I saw Pussy Talk, and I went into the other one, the original, with the lowest of expectations, and was genuinely surprised. Now, I remember when I uploaded the review for that one over on Blip, briefly there was kind of an uncut version, because when I was doing the black boxing on it, uh, to cover up the nudity, I totally hardcore screwed up on one where it was covering it briefly, but I, but I forgot the character moved and the box didn't move. So the character moved and you saw like everything like briefly <laughs> in that one. I had to replace it, but there was a moment where it was kind of an uncut version of that one. 
Uh, so yeah, no, I, I don't have an uncut version of uh, the classic chatterbox. Jacob Matthew Crawford. Uh, aside from Sallow, have you seen or have any thoughts on Pasolini's films? The Decameron, The Canterbury Tales, and Arabian Nights. So I've seen Arabian Nights, but it's been like well over 20 years. I actually think that's the only one that I've seen. Didn't he do... Oh, wait. Did, didn't he do um, The Gospel of St. Matthew or The Gospel According to St. Matthew? Um yeah, that I have, again, been about 20 years. I remember liking them, because um, I like an old, you know, kind of epic like that. But yeah, Sallow is uh, the the one I certainly remember the most, because whether you like that movie or whether you don't, you're not going to forget, <laughs> you're not going to forget what's going on in Sallow, especially if you're eating during it. Mm-mm. I probably should see more of his work, to be perfectly honest, because most of it is, like, way different than what... <laughs> the the trilogy of life is way different than um, the first part of his trilogy of death, which he was killed, so didn't make any movies after that. Oh, oh I would have been curious to see what the rest of that trilogy would have been. Um, Dave Valensky. Speaking of sports movies, would you ever do a review of Slapshot? Absolutely, I would, if anything, to get to the sequels. Slapshot's great. It's one of the best freaking sports movies. The second one, the second one was direct-to-video, still had the Hanson brothers in it, but uh, Stephen Baldwin was the lead in it this time. And then there was a third one, which I'm trying to think of when else this has happened. So it's a trilogy where the third one is a kid's film. It's I think it's about like like it kind of seems more like a Mighty Ducks movie than it does Slapshot. It might still have the Hansons in it, but it's a total ki- like I don't know if it's G rated, but it is a it is a family like kids movie. And the first one so is not. <laughs> Like, okay, like, the first um, Major League was R, and the second one went down to a PG, but I wouldn't call Major League 2 a kid's movie. It just, you know, it, it just wasn't an R. Um, this isn't a sports movie, but uh, there's Police Academy that was R, and then sequels weren't. Eventually, there was a children's television series on that, but that's the 80s. There was children's... <laughs> you, <laughs> if you're an R-rated film in the 1980s, odds are you're going to get a kid's cartoon made out of it. Um, <clears throat> Jeremy, what's a real funny and ridiculous rumor you've read about yourself? I don't know. I, uh... I, I've been on the internet for a long time, so I'm sure that there are. But, uh... Rumor. Um... Uh, I don't know that I'm, like, high in a lot of reviews. I think I remember seeing, like, uh, some things about that sometimes. Which, uh... No, 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 no. I'm, defi- I'm definitely not. Um... I get, you know, I, I can, I can be like really rambly and scatterbrained and everything. So it's not like, I don't see where that would come from, but no, if I was actually high, I wouldn't be, I would do be doing anything else, but be sitting there like online talking or sitting there like editing or doing a video. I would be, I would either be asleep or I certainly wouldn't be talkative or I would be the opposite of that and be running through downtown getting shit faced. Those days are long behind me, but no, not, not, uh, no, not on, not on the internet. Um, so yeah, that's just off the top of my head. I'm not sure, but I'm sure there's some hilarious ones. I, I do know a fan fiction about me. This is years and years and years ago. Uh, but I, I do seem to recall a fan fiction. Which, actually, this would be funny if this was a rumor. Um, where uh, I got my penis stuck in a bottle of Crystal Pepsi. And uh, only Dr. Insano could break it open. <laughs> in fairness, uh, 
That would make sense as a rumor. I would call the good doctor if I got my penis stuck in a bottle of Crystal Pepsi. Mm -mm. Uh, oh, my friend Kermit. Um, looking forward to Jack's thoughts on... J on Mo I almost said Jason takes Manhattan. <laughs> I, I as well am looking forward to his thoughts on Jason Takes Manhattan. Let's see if the boy can make heads or tails out of the ending where Jason gets awashed in the sewers of New York City with toxic waste, which, as everyone knows, the sewers of New York get flooded with very toxic chemicals when it reaches the stroke of midnight that then turns Jason Voorhees back into a little kid. And not the little kid that we're used to seeing, but uh, just a normal-looking kid with hair and regular swim trunks looks nothing like the kid jason that we've seen before jack hopefully jack with uh, the wisdom of his mind as a baby will tell me what he thinks of that if he doesn't fall asleep before they hit new york city <laughs> muppets take manhattan okay jack's thoughts on muppets take manhattan <laughs> When I watch it for 1984, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, Muppets Take Manhattan is uh, um, <laughs> Muppets Take Manhattan's the one I watched the most as a kid. I'm not even saying that it's like necessarily like the best one, but it's my favorite. It's the most sentimental one to me. It is by it's by far and away the most 1980s of all of them. In uh, you know style jokes cameos the kind of comedy that it is like uh yeah oh i i, I do love the uh it was the start of muppet babies too i uh, yeah, i do love that song and that flashback sequence so yeah since that one's the most sentimental and nostalgic one to me for sure we watching uh muppets take manhattan and follow that bird i just, just even even into my adulthood i'd still go back and watch follow that bird anytime um oh and uh, you also said yeah between that and old sesame street between that and old sesame street i'm glad he's being raised on the classics he is we're in the middle of that arc on sesame street when Luis broke his arm <laughs> uh fancy rpg uh Hi, Brad. Still want to collab? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I was just thinking about this the other day, actually. Uh, hey, Brad, you still want to collab on uh, Lloyd Tokes? For sure. You have my email address, right? Uh, it's the uh, the one that's in the... Um, I thought you'd written to me before on Gmail. But it's in... Uh, you can see my email address in the uh, like summary of the snob episodes. Uh, and sending me a DM on... Um, twitter is also like a good way to get in touch with me but uh yeah for sure I, I, i'm totally still down with that uh mh we ate nation nation i was wondering if black devil doll is going to be talked about for 1984 even though it's an sov movie um good job pointing that out because i think on my list like there's multiple lists that i work with um in terms of uh the 80s in film series you know, uh, there's like the website, the numbers, there's a couple of other like lists of movies. And then there's a list that deals specifically in exploitation films. Surprisingly, Black Devil Doll in Hell wasn't on that particular list. But I, I do in lists I've worked with in the past, there have been the shot on video movies because I talked about in 1983 in film, I talked about Sledgehammer. I think it was maybe dependent on if they also went to theaters um, Sledgehammer, I can't remember if it did, was one of them that went to theaters or not. But I, I, I know that, like, uh, sometimes that's dependent on whether they show up on the list. But I'll double check that and see, like, the release date for it and everything and, and, and make sure to include and make sure to include Black Devil Doll from Hell. Um, Nathan Palmer, speaking of Porky's, have you ever seen 1979's Hots? Yeah, hell yeah. Hot, yes, I've seen Hots. H period, O period, T period, S period. Yeah, man. So, it's been a while since I've seen it. Yeah, dude, all girls sports college movie. Mm -mm. We rented that one back in the day. I haven't seen that one a lot. I might have only seen it once, to be perfectly honest. But, um, 
there there's ones that I watch way more, whether it's you know, Screwballs, uh Animal House, of course. Um recently <laughs> re recent re watching all the Porky's movies. Um so I I think hots I actually have in the uh uh tox box for like possible um poll choices. No matter where it, it if it's a, a 70s or 80s sex comedy or if it's the live stream it will uh it will end with the king frat theme. <laughs> Another movie I'm going to make sure stays memorable. Well, it's a terrible film. <laughs> but I'm so glad I can pick stuff like that and just get years of references and material out of. Here's to you, J.J. Grossout Gombrowski. Senor Sticks, which shot on video remake would you like to see? Well, they did remake Black Devil Doll. Um, the dudes behind uh, Rotten Cotton did it, I believe, because I remember reviewing it in the day, and I actually remember it being all right. I, I kind of remember liking it. Uh, remake of an SOV film. Um, <laughs> there was uh, uh, what Hell Roller, because that, that one that I did, shot on Shidio, Part of it was kind of a remake of this, not a remake because it's not the same thing that happens in it, but they're both like wheelchair horror based. Um, and uh, that one, yeah, he remake, remake the killer wheelchair movie. <laughs> Hell, Hell, I think it was called Hell Roller. Um, I mean, if you look at stuff like Sledgehammer, like pretty much every single Jagged Edge movie is a remake of stuff like Sledgehammer. <laughs> we got some people in an isolated house away for the weekend. We throw someone in there, chase them around, boom. Just call them something different every time. In this movie, it's Winnie the Pooh. In this one, it's uh, uh, Humpty Dumpty. In this one, it's the Easter Bunny. In this one, it's a dinosaur. They have a formula. Actually, that, that second Winnie the Pooh movie was actually pretty good. Um... Yeah, chat says, uh, yeah, Blackest blackest Heart and Rotten Cotton remade uh, Black Devil Doll. I think that's all we got. I uh, think that's all we got for the Super Chats. Uh, let me go ahead and scroll up and make sure I didn't miss anything. Let me squint just to make sure. But, uh, all right, there we go. Yeah, we're all, we're all good. All right, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Thank you for being patient and uh, hanging with me on these extra streams uh, while we await the copyright to get cleared on Porky's. <laughs> Fingers crossed, same thing won't happen with them. Um, something short of paradise, but uh, all right, people. Again, I hope you have... A great night. Subscribe to us on patreon.com slash the cinema snob. You can vote on some different polls. And I uh, got a poll going on right now for what movie I'm going to see on on theaters in theaters tomorrow. So, okay, people. Take care. Have a great night. Oh, oh, wait, wait. I knew I was doing something wrong. I almost clicked end stream, and I was like, something doesn't seem right about this. Right. The... That would have been embarrassing if minutes after mentioning it, I forgot the King Frat theme. So, alright, stay snobby. <laughs>